Let's get back to college football and the preview and predictions. And I want to give you UTEP at Nebraska. Nebraska laying 27 and a half at home. This is the first time that these schools play. Now, I'm talking about this game, even though it's nearly a 30-point favorite for the home team, because Nebraska has a intriguing player who I think is an X-factor, one of the few X-factors, and that's Dylan Riola. I also, tomorrow, will be talking about you know Michigan and Ohio State's games, and their Michigan, I don't even think, is favored by 27 and a half at home, which is understandable because Fresno State's way better than UTEP, and they have Texas the following week. Ohio State's favored to, to hang like a 60-burger on Akron, and I think they're exactly favored by like 50 points. It, it's crazy. But we'll be talking about those games because even the small games still have something to give you in terms of what's the team improved at? How do the backups look? How do some new players look? I mean, there's always new players, even on the teams that return a gargantuan amount of starters and returning production. Dylan Riola got a Matthew Stafford comp from Andrew Innes, a main scout for 24-7 sports. And in high school, last year, he passed for 2,819 yards, 34 touchdowns, a pick, and he had 250 pass attempts for 159 completions. That overall means that he completed about 64% of his passes, and he threw for over 10 yards per pass attempt and for over 30 touchdowns. I mean, it's it's crazy. Only one interception, too. I mean, he knows how to take care of the football. And Nebraska's offense gave up so many turnovers last year. The team in total, the Nebraska Cornhuskers last season— were second to last in all of the FBS, dead last in the then Power Five, rest in peace to the Pac-12, in turnover margin per game. UTEP is a team that is bottom of the barrel. They were 3-9 and nine last year. Nebraska brings back more. They were the better team last year. I mean, they should beat UTEP, and they should beat them handily. But they can beat UTEP handily and, and turn over the ball three times because UTEP is that bad. They can beat UTEP handily, and Riola only completes 45 or 50% of his passes because Nebraska could just run the ball all day, play great defense, and and maybe get several field goals or a, a defensive touchdown or two. Those are possible. What you want to see tomorrow out of Nebraska is Dylan Riola playing with poise, him throwing the ball accurately, you want to see his protection hold up because Teddy Prohaska is sadly hurt and Turner Corcoran, who struggled for years, looks to be starting at offensive tackle. The offensive line still has some questionable depth. They're a few injuries away from once again being one of the worst O-lines in the Big Ten and potentially a bottom half offensive line in the Power Four. So it's important that the starters on offense play well, that they're disciplined, they don't make mistakes, that there are few penalties, that there aren't errant throws, that the throws are either in the basket or they're out of bounds because Riola has strategically thrown them away without getting an intentional grounding penalty. Or he puts them, as I said, right in the basket and you get some, this would be really good, like deep shots to Jalen Lloyd or Jamal Banks, or Isaiah Nayer, whoever you name it. If Nebraska can come out and have an explosive offensive performance in the pass game, in the run game, I know the passing game would be more exciting, but if Nebraska can have one of the country's best rushing offenses this year and be better on the offensive line than I expect, then that would almost be a better way of playing in the Big Ten, where physicality and trench play dominates. But I think with the talent of Riola being a five-star out of high school, for a while the number one quarterback and number one player of the 2024 class, Nebraska, Matt Rule, Marcus Satterfield, even Tony White, the defensive coordinator who had to carry Nebraska to all five of their wins last year and kept the Cornhuskers in, in 
11 of their 12 games last year. You want to see Raiola play well, extend drives, convert third downs, make deep throws, or at least show that he has the potential to make them the arm strength, the accuracy, but also make throws over the middle, make them toward the boundary, make short throws, make correct reads, throw it away, don't force it. And you want to see the offensive tackles do well too. But I think how does Raiola perform? That is the biggest question here. That's something to pay attention to even in this small game. You want to see that in a Nebraska victory because their quarterback play last year was just awful. It was horrific. I think you'll get that out of Nebraska. I don't believe that Raiola will necessarily come out and have like a 400 or even perhaps 300-yard day. Even though Nebraska wants to pass the ball more, and Matt Rule has you know, stated that and and spoke about that fairly often, I still think Nebraska's a team where they're going to want to be physical and they're going to want to ground and pound at times. And I think you'll see that against UTEP. And it won't be too much because you want to keep the running backs and the offensive line healthy for future games, and you really want to show that powerful rushing offense in future games. Also, to keep depth healthy, secure, to prevent injuries, Nebraska will be rotating players in this game, I guarantee you that. I don't know if Riola will get benched, but the play calling will be toned down, especially with the Colorado game coming up in Week 2. I think Nebraska covers. I don't think they'll score 40 points. I don't even think the total... What's the total in this game? Let me check it out. I don't even think that 40 points will be scored in this game, period. I think Nebraska will want to win. They'll want to get out of there. They'll want to see a little bit of what they have against a team that's not themselves in spring or summer or fall camp and practice. And then they'll want to move on and prepare for Colorado. The total in this game, by the way, on this Saturday game at 3.30 p.m. is 48 and a half. I would take the under here because Nebraska's offense is still going to have enough clunkiness to it and enough inconsistencies to sort out. But I don't think that'll even be shown in this game. More likely, they'll just chew clock. They'll try and get Raiola very comfortable and then they'll tone it down. And the defense will shut out this offense or come very close to it because, again, this is going to be a top 15, top 10 defense this year bringing back Tommy Hill, who had four picks and four passes defended last year, Isaac Gifford, bringing in transfer Bly Hill. This is going to be a very good Nebraska team. It's why I have them rated inside of my top 20. From a power ratings, power rankings, whatever you want to call it, same thing, angle. They're going to be up there this year. They're going to be one of the better teams in college football. Not the best, not top 10, but they're going to be very competitive in the Big Ten, even in some of their bigger games, which shows that they are a good, great football team. So I'm taking Nebraska to win. I'm taking them to cover. I think Raiola will have probably more than 200 passing yards, which, given last year's quarterback debacle, that's a good amount to ask for, and I wouldn't be shocked if Nebraska had over 200 rushing yards too. They had a good rushing offense for their struggles on the O-line last year. With Mezcua transferring in and what they return on the interior, that should be a strength of the offense in general. It's the interior of that O-line along with quarterback. I think Nebraska wins 38-0. Thank you for watching this cut of Touchdown Talk. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, comment your thoughts down below, and share this video around to other college football fans. I want to give a special shout-out to my Patreon members for sponsoring this channel and video. Thanks to Crash2488 and Braska Rascal for being Heisman members. Thanks to Chris Lane, Connor Little OH, Ismart, and Tyler Nye for being All-American members. And thanks to John Lynn, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, Austin Christmas, and Janisha Cockrell for being All-Conference members. If you want direct message access to me, and also after six months of membership, free signed college football with Sam merchandise delivered to your door, merchandise of your choosing, I may add. Sign up as a Heisman member for $25 a month and stick around for six months. All-American membership is $10. All-conference membership is $5. 
If you want merchandise regardless, check out my merchandise store via the link in the description or down below in the pinned comment. It's high quality stuff. I wear it for all of my streams, and that's because it's comfortable, high quality, athletic, stretchy. It's really good clothing, and I encourage you to check out my merchandise store along with my Patreon page, which are in the links in the description and in the pinned comment. Have a great day, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.